Hey everybody, welcome back. What you are looking at here is a mid-90s 30 horsepower Johnson outboard. It is a long shaft and I have no need for a long shaft, so I will be converting it in this video over to a short shaft. First thing we need to do is remove the lower unit. Alright, with the lower removed here is what I'm left with. Now, the thing is, you may not get lucky and have this extension kit in here. You may have an entire exhaust housing that is longer, in which case you need to replace the exhaust housing. To remove the exhaust housing really isn't that much more work. It's, it's almost off with the power head gone. It didn't, it didn't dawn on me when I started working on this motor that I was going to need to pull off the power head. I thought I could uh, get away with just removing the... Um, Lower unit and drive shaft and shift rod, and then it dawned on me the shift rod is the entire length as well. But what do you do? All right, let's get this uh, extension housing piece off of here. It's not that much more work with the lower off, obviously, because I've only got a couple of screws left in it. Now, for some mysterious reason, there is a bolt right there. Why oh, yeah, it's there? Let me tell you. Ah, oh, that thing is tight though, let me tell you. Alright. It's a 9 16 You can see it with my socket light here. I'm probably just going to hit it with the impact. Call it a day. Uh, it's a long, long bolt. Runs all the way to the exhaust housing. You'll see it when I get it out of there. Extension housing should pop down now. Should. It's loose in the back. It's still really tight up front. To hit it with something else. All right, a slide hammer and a nut should work here. Fingers crossed, anyway. I need a smaller slide hammer. Definitely gonna need a smaller side hammer. Well, that sucks because it's the smallest one I got. Alright, I have a thread adapter to adapt the side hammer down a little bit. I believe this came with the kit or with the side hammer, I'm not sure. I'll uh, try to remember to put links for the parts for the tools that I use, links to the part numbers. Anyway, so I'm threading it into the housing there. Kind of hitting it, which broke that seal loose, but it's still tight up here. Alright, I have a quarter 20 screw, followed by a little quarter 20, uh, I don't know what these are called, adapter. Let's go with that connector. And that should. Screw into my slide hammer now. Nope. It's not a quarter twenty. Why did I think it was? All right, Plan B. I removed the uh, water tube adapter. Water tube just sits up in there. Falls, falls right out. I'm going to remove the power head so I can get the shift rod and the water tube out of there. Which water tube might just pull out? All right, water tube out. Anyway. So I'm going to pull the power head off now so I can get the shift rod. With the shift rod off, I should just be able to unscrew this thing. It'll leave the bolt stuck in there, 
but at least I can get it out and then deal with just extracting the bolt. I don't want to go in here with a bunch of screwdrivers to pry this out of there. Because, you know, it'll damage something. And if you're curious, the top bolt is what's stuck here. So, all right, Pyrid, coming off. All right, we have a bolt here and here. powder there and let's hope that uh, doesn't continue. Well here and here. Most part that went okay. Nothing too concerning. The reason I say concerning you don't want broken bolts here. All right, fuel lines have got to go. So this thing has half of the... Well, I shouldn't say half. It's, it's still got all of the manual control stuff on it, which there is a rod right here that connects to the shifter, which is connected to the exhaust housing. Rod's got to come off so the power head can lift off. Now, usually you would remove all this junk to properly remove the power head. The thing is, I don't really want to go through that because of the tight spaces, but I just popped the rod off, so that's truly all we really care about. There is a specially bent wrench for this. I will also try to include the part number for this. But I gotta get this nut off. No reason for me to show you how to do that now that I've showed you the tool and where the nut is. So I will stop the video and do the other side. Now, naturally, I forgot about this. The uh, other side is behind all this stuff. So, gotta get to it. And that's not gonna be fun. So, pull the 716 screws off of here which allow me to get the shift rod kind of moved. I don't know, it's not gonna be fun. I'll leave it recording so you can see what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'll just work through it. See if it's uh, ready to go. Oh, this side still looks like it wants to hang on. Over to what though? Looks like that did it. And now we have a much better look at what we're dealing with here. Nothing unusual. Gotta get that top nut out. It's got a little bent end to it, which just kind of acts like it's keeper. You, uh, as you can see, I just plowed right through it. When you put it back on, you can just bend it back. I suppose it helps. Doesn't stop a wrench from turning it. We have a screw down there. A screw up top. Now, you may have heard something hit the ground there. That is a small square nut I forgot was back there, which is that one right there. 
There is another one, but it hasn't fallen off yet. Now, this is going to be a little tricky to do. Really, what you have to do here is remove the hood pan, lift it up, and slide off the shift rod at the same time. It's, it's kind of annoying. There might be another way to get it out there, but I found it yet. Uh, you know what? You can you can force it, kind of. But anyway, now the shifter out of sliding or the shifter shift lever. That's really what we're after. Now there is a small circ clip here. Usually these don't give any troubles. They can come right off. Set that down there. Now this should slide in just a little bit. Enough to get our handle off. Perfect. Now I'm going to put that clip somewhere where I'll lose it. Along with that flash, flat washer goes behind it. Rod fell and hit the ground, which is what we were after. So there is the long shift rod at the bottom here. With any luck, we can twist this thing out of here. All right, that's what we're dealing with. That stuck bolt. There's also a little pin spacer in there, but once the nut's out, that shouldn't be a, really a problem. All right, wait for this thing to focus. That's what we're left with. I put a nut over there, right there. Tighten this guy on. That is my rigged up puller to pull that C stud out of there. Will it work? Don't know. Fingers crossed. It probably will. That or the nut's going to break. Or the stud will break. I don't know. It's hard to say if it's moving or not. It's probably moving. Nope. Broke. Darn. Alright, well, that's not the end of the world either. Just gotta go in there and drill it out now. Well, that sucks. Huh, the air hammer might knock it out of there. Give it a try anyway. Yep, that did it. Knocked it loose. So the problem is, uh, I thought I could just hammer this stud up, but it's hitting the inner uh, steering shaft here. So not a big deal. I just got to cut it, and hammer it, cut it, and hammer it. You know the usual. And the battery died. All right. Now the problem is this stuck uh, spacing thing. Um, I'm gonna have to drill that out. I tried putting a pipe wrench on the side already. It's not budging. Easiest way I could think of is to drill it out. Uh, the true dimension is uh, 0.4985. So a half inch drill bit and that thing should be out of there. So I'll start drilling. So that last one was a 64th of an inch shy of half inch and the walls of this thing are so thin now it should kind of just bend or break out of there. Oh, oh doesn't look like it's going to happen. Alright, half inch it is.
Well, that's what we're left with, a normal exhaust housing. Now, in fairness, that did go as well as it could have with that stuck front. Um, sometimes you'll break the exhaust housing itself, trying to hammer that thing out of there. Got, got lucky. Now I need to make a decision of whether to keep the lower pan or replace it with something nicer. Uh, one of its problems, which isn't really a problem, but this rear hook, it's pretty loose. The, it's been used so much it's kind of worn down. It could be the bushing. Don't know. The other thing, we got a lot of custom holes drilled in this thing, which I don't care for, and it's really just ugly. Let's uh, throw a hood on it. Now, this hood isn't in the best of shape either, but it's not, not the worst, I'd say. See, that makes it look just all around kind of trashy still. Maybe if the bottom pan was white as well. It might look halfway decent. Let me show you the hood I have for it. All right, that's the pull start hood. Honestly, all the way around this thing is just gonna look like trash. I I wanted to paint it, but the cost and time I didn't want to go through. So I don't know. Eh, yeah, I'll probably be. I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll get back to you. All right, decision has been made. I'm gonna buy a new lower cover because I don't like all these holes in the front. There's really no way for me to cover them up. At least not have it look dumb. So yeah, I'm gonna buy a new cover for it. Uh, this fell off another hood. Let me get that out of there. All right, might as well get this lower pan off. See if we're gonna break any bolts in the process. Now for the next issue, the power head gasket and exhaust little uh, boot thing here is all one. So in order to put a new gasket on here, we also need to change off this lower piece, which kind of sucks because these are, aren't going to break as often as the lower mounts, but they still have a tendency to break. And that's not the case only on these, the 9.9s and 15s. They snap off when you look at them wrong, too. So, fingers crossed. Just take your time. Usually you can feel if there's going to be a problem. It feels like the two bottoms here, lowest, lowermost, can be a little stuck. If these break, that's really going to suck. like the one back there. This one will probably come out just because it's turning, but the back one feels like it's going to give me some problems. And I'm also tempted to just hit with the impact. Let's see where life takes me. All right, I hit them all with the impact. I didn't record it because I was going to get nothing but hate for it. Um, I would have predicted, oh no, use heat, use a special mixture of random off-the-shelf fluids that don't mix together correctly. You'll get them out, I always do, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to hear all that. So, the bolt in the back, the one I said was giving me the most problems, which was this one, wound up coming out. So, pretty lucky on that one. And now we just give this thing a tap, and off comes our little housing part. Now, I'm going to set the power head off to the side, I'll clean up the gasket surface when a uh, gasket gets here. Should only be a few days, but as I'm doing the lower pan too, that's probably going to be another week. So I got a whole week to do the lower unit. Scrape this clean and yeah, do some random other things. Well, good news. None of the mounts broke. The lower pan here. Which is kind of unusual, and I'm really, really glad. Let's go ahead and 
clean out spider eggs in here. Now, you don't usually want to set fire to your outboard, but there is a time. Now, for whatever reason, I have a cable on here. So, well, this is grinders right here. Eh, that thing's been bugging me for a while. Thing is this steering uh, arm here. I don't know what it is. I've never seen one. It looks like that. At least not that I remember. I'm sure I have. Probably not. Nope. Let's pull that off. Now to remove the drive shaft out of the lower unit here, I need to pull off the water pump, so I'll go ahead and do that, and the uh, drive shaft should slide right out. All right, with the water pump out, our drive shaft will slide right out of there. And here is the comparison, if I can get it in frame, which I can't, but anyway, you get the idea. The new short shaft versus the original long shaft. And naturally, or obviously. Uh, now, whenever you install new seals, you're also supposed to put some triple guard grease between the lips. So I figured I might as well do that, too. Now, of course, we either replace or reinstall the original pump. I'll be installing a new one, but that'll be in its own video. Now, the water tube out of the long shaft gear case looks like this. We're going to short, so we're going to use this little guy. I already put new row rings on here. All right. With the drive shaft out, we can identify its part number. 328317. That part number was used on engines up until 1995. In 1996, the shaft was the same, but the part number changed. But that means that our engine is a 1995 at best. It could be older, but I doubt it's probably a 95. So that's uh, that's good to know. Oh, happy days are upon us. New lower cowl has just arrived. Get the puppy open. All right, while I waited for parts to arrive, I cleaned up the gasket surface on top of the power head, as well as cleaned up the shift rod handle. I didn't go crazy with it, just, you know, got all the old grease off it, made it look a little better. So, it's time to start reinstalling stuff. This is triple guard grease, I'm gonna put some on here. Cleaned all the old stuff off. If I do this now, I won't have to grease the fitting later. So, get the tripod for you, and go ahead and install this. And I put it in a little bit, as you saw, just to kind of get the grease starting to spread around in there. Overdoing it here won't really hurt anything. Help it, if anything. Wipe the excess off the back here. Now, we do have to get the washer in there, so don't forget about that. And with that pushed in just a little bit, I can install my replacement shift rod, which is the short shaft version, which should go in like so. Just like that. Going to push in a little bit, get the washer on, then reinstall this little circlet. Hopefully, I don't drop it. That clip is on. Let's 
install the handle the entire way. So far, so good. I'm going to put some grease on the threads of the shift rod screw. If it ever wants to come back out of there, I actually want it to be. Probably should use a uh, some type of anti seize, but you scratch how well grease works. At least I think. I don't think I've ever come back to an engine 20 years later or anything, but I'm sure it's fine. All right, that is snugged up. Go a little bit more, and then I will knock that key back in place. Now, I, I have already chased the threads for the lower mount here, so please keep that in mind. You definitely want to do that. Now, my lower little hood insulator, little seal thing, is in pretty poor shape. Fortunately, it doesn't really do much, so I'm just going to put it back on. New lower pan has arrived, so it is time to put it on. I will need some additional hardware. That is what it's going to look like. Now before we bolt it on, I have cleaned up the threads of the hardware, so shouldn't have any issues there. The other thing you got to remember is the rubber mounts here call for a little washer and then the fender washer on top, and then the nut. That's how the top goes. However, the bottom is the same way. Up against the rubber is a little washer, followed by a big washer, and then that would go through there. So. Well, if you've taken it off, they probably stick to the bottom and people lose them. So, that's how it's supposed to go. Do your best to find the replacement hardware to make sure that they kind of go back together like that as well. I've taken apart a few 9.9, 15 horsepower motors. So I've got a couple of spare mounts and washers. So I'm going to be putting those down there. But it is kind of a little mixed batch. I have an all handy to assist with alignment of the two lower washers. I have a little bottle of gasket sealing compound, which I will be putting on the threads of the bolts, installing them to the holes, and threading them. With that attached, I will come back and I will now clean up the inside of the power of the pan here and get all the grease and you know, junk off of it. I got the hood mostly cleaned up. I forgot to do this step. Install the shift lever back in here and then the, the ground of course. Alright, I have the bottom of the power head uh, cleaned up here, the gasket surface. I'm going to run my tap down all of the holes, make sure we don't have any hardware issues. Alright, as this was a military motor, the bottom crankcase little hose here went to the dewatering valve. I will not be installing a dewatering valve. So basically I'm demilitarizing de this motor, and to do that I need to install the proper hose on the bottom. So while the power head is off, I'm going to do that now. I probably won't mention much of this later on in my videos for this motor because, well, nobody's really going to do it. Very few people have these military motors. Well, I don't know. I guess they're out there. but Either way, swapping out the lower hose, going to the actual hose that would connect here to the top. All right, this is a standard 532nds hose. There is the hose and part number for it if you want to... Uh, Get one for yourself. Alright, here is the lower uh, exhaust housing slash water pickup tube. Obviously it goes right there, if you remember when we took it off. Down inside of this hole, you want to get a pick and ensure that there is a small little plastic washer in there. In this case there is, I can get the pick under it, pick it up a little bit and I can see it. So I know it's in there. Uh, more on that in a second. 
All right, I know my desk is kind of a disgusting mess, but bear with me. Uh, this little pile right in front is the freshly cleaned hardware that goes into the lower power head here, both the little ones for the exhaust boot and the big ones that actually mount to the power head. I have already cleaned off the studs right here, so they're uh, ready for nuts. I have a aftermarket powerhead gasket. The reason I have an aftermarket is because I forgot to order one. And this was quicker and cheaper than paying one of the big part suppliers to ship it to me. Alright. Keep in mind I've already cleaned up the gasket surface here. So each one of our little quarter 20 screws gets some of this junk on it. And alright, slight problem. Corrosion on the holes. You know, right there. Making that screw go a little tighter than it should. I'm gonna go clean up those holes. All right, we're in a 930 second or 1932. I don't know Uh Screws for a drill bit down the screw holes. That seemed to clear it right up. All right, well, uh, checking the torque specs on the uh, bolts here. Notice in the manual it says do not use sealer on the powerhead gasket. Whoopsie. <laughs> I'm not really too concerned, but I'm just going to leave it. I don't care. Maybe it was new you shouldn't have, but now with all those fine cracks, eh, let's leave it. All right. They give no special torque sequence here, so I'm going to go with the traditional car wheel star pattern. Oh yeah, it's 96 to 105 inch pounds. Uh, it's 90, yeah, yeah. let me go check that. All right, it's 96 to 120 inch pounds. All right, well, that should be it. Yep, torqued and ready. All right, here is the short shaft water tube that I removed off the engine I tore down to do this project. Uh, its water tube is completely seized into the housing here um, to the point to where I'm pretty sure it's got some JB weld or something holding it in there. The second thing is it's kind of blown up here. There is a pretty, a pretty good crack. So between not needing or not being able to get the water tube back out and that crack, I decided just to buy a new water tube. Well. A new short shaft water tube or standard shaft and reuse the original exhaust housing because it wasn't cracked. Now this came with a new little washer seal. The washer seal being the thing that goes inside of there, right there. They are not available anymore so I didn't want to use my new one inside of here. The plan is to put it in a bag and put it in my pile of uh, parts. And if I ever need to duplicate it or copy it or order a new one I can use this one to size it up. And if anybody ever wants to know what size it is, should they need to replace theirs, I'll be able to answer questions on where to get one. That's the uh, that's the theory anyway. So, you can use the orientation of how this one is to install my new one. So, it kind of comes down and goes out that way. So my new one will go the same way, just like so. Yeah, that's about right, I'd say. 
Now, the other thing is good luck making one of these. On, let's say, a six horse, it's just a water or a copper tube and a bend in it. It's a piece of cake. But on this thing, you have this little crimped on little flare fitting. I, I don't have the tooling to make that, nor do I have the uh, know how. So I just found it easier just to buy a new tube. All right, it is time to install the power head back onto the housing. Um, the studs are going to be the most annoying part about this. You're supposed to use blue Loctite on these studs. However, I don't really care to do that. I've never really seen these bolts have a problem other than being stuck on there. So I'd rather use some of the sealing compound to protect the threads to make sure we don't have any issues than putting a locking compound on there, thus securing the bolts of those studs. This, it's just kind of a way to ensure I can remove the power head if the time ever comes again. Now before putting on the power head, we're gonna to wanna to get some triple guard grease and put it on this O-ring. If there's any damage or you have any concerns with this O-ring, it'd be a good idea to replace it. Yeah, I know, I, f I forgot to mention that earlier. Oops. So without further ado, let's lower it on there. All right, before moving ahead or doing anything else, you're gonna wanna reinstall these nuts here first. A little hard to get to. This is probably the most tedious part about this. That with the uh, clean studs, installation should go a little bit easier than removal. Problem is you still can't get your hand down inside of there. And this one's a little harder to get to. I know on camera here it looks like, oh, that's a piece of cake. And it is and it isn't. The thing is, you have the shifter in the way. I guess it is easier, actually. Yeah, that was easier. Never mind. All right, so the other side's the hard side. Power head on, I can get my freshly coated hardware and start putting in the main bolts in the back here. Alright, I don't want to tilt the motor up and make this easy on me because it's only really held in, at least tightly, with those two nuts. So I'm going to come back and tighten all these down with it still on the ground, or down, or in its proper position, I mean. Alright, our water pump came with a little uh, bit of molly lube. Molly lube gets attached to the drive shaft splines to ensure that the drive shaft never sees into the crankshaft. I have put triple guard grease on the shift rod hole and the O-rings on the uh, water tube, and then coated the little uh, stud here and the gasket sealing compound just to make sure the stud here doesn't seize into the uh, exhaust housing again. All right now we need to align the drive shaft splines, the shift rod and the water tube that you can't see, it's right there, at the same time while we install the lower unit. So this is where four or five hands is really going to come handy. So let's install this lower and see how it goes. All right, dry sh shift rod. That's inserted. Now, looks like the water tube is gonna line without an issue. With the other hand, I'm rotating the flywheel while pushing that in. So it looks like it all lined just perfectly. Kind of hold it there. I'll get a bolt, slide it in just to kind of hold it for me for a second. Now the problem is our shift rod. We need to slide this brass bushing, map bushing, whatever this thing's called, over that, which we can't really do right now. So I need to lower the lower unit back down a little bit and then slide this on. Okay, now we need to install a new keeper. 
part number is right there, in case you're curious. It's a little tiny black plastic thing. I bought two in case I was going to reseal the gear case. I could change the one down there, but since I didn't take it out, I don't need to replace it. Which is good, because now I have a spare. It gets installed. Oops. There's a slot. Which you force over the shift rod, just like so. Then you slide the keeper shift rod back into place. Get the thread started best you can. Yeah, they're started enough. Now, as I remove the extension housing out of this, you're going to have two bolts. A shorter version and a longer version. The shorter version go from the gear case. The longer versions are for the uh, extension housing. So, every bolt needs to get coated in the gasket sealing compound. That way it doesn't ever seize up on you. I'm going to push the lower into position and thread in that screw. Now this one is a longer bolt, so it comes out. I put that longer one in there just to hold it for me while I lined everything. Alright, now this one is in. We'll get them both in a little more. Now I'm going to install the little nut up here. Now the lower is about ready to go in. You don't want to use these screws to force it in there. It needs to be able to go up naturally. So I give it a little push and I can see that everything is going to seat perfectly fine. So I know that I'm going to have no issues tightening these screws down. All four in along with the stud in the front. So alignment's not going to be a problem, so I just come back and tighten these all down now. And that's it folks, we are done. Alright, here are all the leftover parts. We have the extension housing, the four screws, the uh, long drive shaft, the long water tube, the long shift rod, the long water tube, copper water tube, and the long little extension housing bolt. So we got a white hood pan on here now. I think it looks a lot better already, especially it being the, uh, a little short shaft now. I just think they look better. Uh, I didn't hook up the, uh, the shift rod handle because I'm going to a electric start anyway. No reason to put it back together just to take it apart. So we'll cover that in a little later video. But if you're watching this just to do the long to short shaft conversion like I did, or short to long, now it's just a simple matter of hooking the power head components back up and you should be good to go. Alright, next is the carburetor and then I think we'll do the electric start conversion. So stay tuned for those and I will see y'all later.